one of the more eclectic individuals in recent physical culture history, Mike Menser was born on November 15, 1951, in Afreda, Pennsylvania. An extremely bright but slightly built kid, Menser started lifting weights at 12 years old after seeing the cover of Muscle magazines and deciding that he wanted to look like his childhood hero, Bill Pearl. By the time he was 15, Mike weighed 165 pounds and could bench press 370. Upon graduation from high school, Mike enlisted in the Air Force for a four-year stint. While in the military, he started working out three hours a day for six days a week. During this time, he won his first bodybuilding show with a 1971 title, Mr. Lancaster. In the same year, Mike had a disappointing performance at the AAU Mr. America contest, finishing 10th. However, from defeat came opportunity. The contest winner, Casey Viator, introduced Mike to the man who had become his mentor and trainer, Arthur Jones. Remember, as we constantly state, this is a pattern common to physical cultural heroes. They have mentors. The eccentric Arthur Jones, who we featured in an earlier Jailhouse Strong video, lived by the motto, younger women, faster airplanes, bigger crocodiles. And while he's best known as the creator of the Nautilus workout machine, he was also an innovator in the high-intensity model of training. Some of Arthur Jones's principles regarding high-intensity training included a focus on strict form, controlled movement of the weight, working to failure, and an avoidance of overtraining. This approach worked for Menser. In 1978, he won the Mr. Universe with the first ever perfect 300 score. The following year, in 1979, he won the heavyweight Olympia title with another 300 perfect score. But he would lose to Frank Zane in the overall division. In 1980, Mike took fourth at the Olympia, with Arnold Schwarzenegger taking the title. This was a decision he vigorously contested, claiming that the event was rigged. In fact, it led to his retirement from bodybuilding. Away from the competitive scene, Menser became entranced with Ayn Rand's philosophical form of objectivism. Aside from the strong support of capitalism and free markets, what's meant, which Menser advocated, a central tenet, tenet of this mode of thought is that it is morally proper for one to pursue happiness, and that through perception, humans may understand a unified reality, or one truth. For Menser, philosophy, bodybuilding, and his life's work were all connected, and they were components in his quest for happiness. His work took the form of intensive training, often with his brother, fellow bodybuilder, Ray Menser, and a series of books and articles he would write regularly. Often his training blurred and his writing blurred the line separating his personal view on philosophy with his perspectives on diet and nutrition. In regard to nutrition, in his book Heavy Duty Nutrition, Mike recommends eating a balanced diet from all four food groups and that carbohydrates should make up the large portion, 50 to 60 percent of calories consumed. His training program was heavily influenced by Arthur Jones. In the example workout provided in a moment here, the imprint from Jones can be seen with the minimal sets and the inclusion of the Nautilus machine. Yet, Mike was one of the few advocates of high-intensity training to break from Jones's strict principles. Specifically, Arthur Jones had bodybuilders train their entire body during every workout because he believed the body should be treated as an interconnected unit. In contrast, Menser thought an entire body workout was too much in one day. A strong advocate for recovery, Mike suggested, quote, that no matter what methods you use, you don't do more than four to six sets per body part. Use strict form, train to failure, use forced reps occasionally, and don't overtrain. That is, don't train so frequently that you exceed your body's ability to overcome the exhaustive effects of exercise and don't have enough recovery ability left over for growth." End quote. Also, it should be noted that Menser did not advocate stretching because he felt that, it, that this exercise or any exercise done in a full range of motion will allow flexibility to be maintained or even increased. 
Similarly, Mike did not recommend aerobic training because it could interfere with proper recovery. Mike did recommend training with intentionality. This is a concept we discuss at great lengths in our books, The Successful Mindset Manual and Grounded in Gratitude. For Menser, intentionality meant arriving at the gym with purpose and moving through your workout with minimal distractions. For this program, Tuesday would be a recovery day. After Wednesday's workout, Thursday would be another recovery day before starting the split again on Friday. Lastly, he would often go past the listed reps to continue with force and negative reps once a week for the ex exercises on a machine that he calls pre-exhaust sets. This refers to the initial exercises for each body part. So the workout, according to John Little, Menser's co-author, goes as follows. Workout one on Monday would start with legs. Menser would superset leg extensions, one set, six to eight reps, with leg presses, one set, six to eight reps. These would be the pre-exhaust sets. Then he'd move on to squats, one set, six to eight reps, leg curls, two sets, six to eight reps, calf raises, two sets, six to eight reps, and toe presses, one set, six to eight reps. Then on to chest, he would superset dumbbell flies or pec deck, and he would do one to two sets for six to eight reps, and he would superset that with incline presses, one to two sets, six to eight reps. Then he would finish with dips, two sets, six to eight reps. The last body part for the day would be triceps. He would start with a superset, the pre-exhaust sets being pushdowns, one set of six to eight reps, dips, one set of six to eight reps, before finishing with line tricep extensions, two sets, six to eight reps. His second workout would be on Wednesday after the recovery on Tuesday. He would start with a back workout. This would be a superset starting with Nautilus pullovers, two sets, six to eight reps, and the superset on the other side would be close grip pull downs, two sets, six to eight reps, and then finish with bent over barbell rows, two sets, six to eight reps. Then on to traps, supersetting universal machine shrugs, two sets, six to eight reps, with upright rows, two sets, six to eight reps. Then on to shoulders, he would superset Nautilus laterals, two sets, six to eight reps, with Nautilus presses, two sets, six to eight reps, before moving on to real, rear delt rows, two sets, six to eight reps, and then finally finishing with biceps, starting with standing barbell curls, one set, six to eight reps, and then on to concentration curls, two sets, six to eight reps. For more of these old stories, this history of physical culture, click subscribe.